In this topic, we will define the HSDPA channel timing relationships, describe how channel conditions are reported by the UE, discuss the role of the node B scheduler, summarize the packet formation process, illustrate packet transmission and reception, and calculate HSDPA data rates. Here is a high-level view of how downlink data transmission occurs in an HSDPA system. All the UEs in a cell send the channel quality reports to the node B on their respective HSDPCCHs. The node B scheduling algorithm looks at the channel quality reports and other factors such as available resources and chooses one or more users for high-speed transmission. Since the node B schedulers have chosen UE1, data is transmitted to UE1 on the HSDSCH. The HSDSCH could be mapped onto one or more HSPDSCHs. Supporting control information that indicates how to interpret the HSDSCH is sent on the associated HSSCCH. After UE1 receives the packet on the HSDSCH, it sends an ACK to the node B if decoding was successful. Otherwise, UE1 sends an ACK to the node B. Steps 1 through 4 are repeated continuously. The UMTS radio frame consists of 15 time slots, or 10 milliseconds. The transmission time of the HSSCCH coincides with the start of the UMTS radio frame. The HSSCCH is transmitted in subframe units, where one subframe consists of three time slots, or two milliseconds. One or more HSPDSCHs are transmitted two time slots after the transmission of the associated HSSCCH. The HSPDSCH is received at the UE after experiencing the propagation delay. The UE decodes the packet and sends the feedback to the node B 5 milliseconds after receiving the entire packet. The CQI, or Channel Quality Indicator, reporting mechanism enables the UE to provide fast feedback to the node B regarding the current channel conditions. It is possible to configure the feedback frequency of the CQI reports. The fastest feedback frequency is once every 2 milliseconds, while the slowest feedback frequency is once every 160 milliseconds. Fast CQI feedback also helps node B transmit data at the highest rate to the UE for current channel conditions. In the UMTS Release 99 system, the scheduler is implemented at the RNC, while in an HSDPA system, the scheduler is implemented at the node B. The scheduler is not standardized and therefore is implementation specific. Let's look at potential inputs to a scheduler first. The UE provides the CQI and ACK or NAC to the node B. The scheduler can adapt the data rate to the current channel conditions. If there is a large amount of data, higher data rates can reduce the overall delay. If there is very little data, higher rates are not necessary. For a user with a higher subscription level, higher data rates are assigned by the scheduler. A user that has not been assigned a high rate channel for a long time could be given priority so that the user experience is enhanced. Some UEs may not be capable of supporting higher data rates. Such UE capability should be considered while assigning data rates. The radio resources that are currently available for use are considered by the scheduler while assigning data rates. Two basic outputs from the scheduler are the identities of the UEs that have been scheduled and the parameter settings that define how the packet would be formed. As we discussed before, the scheduling algorithm has not been standardized. Here are three examples of algorithms that can be used to select users for high-speed transmission. In a round-robin algorithm, users are selected one by one. 
The best effort scheduler selects the user that is requesting the highest data rate. In the proportional fairness algorithm, the user is selected based on requested data rates and the amount of data transmitted in the recent past. Once a UE has been chosen for data transmission, decisions about certain parameters are made. Such decisions define how the packet would be formed for the selected UE. For a new packet transmission, the transport block size is determined. If a packet is retransmitted, its original transport block size is used. The scheduler selects the turbo code symbols for data transmission. For example, the scheduler could choose raw information bits or coded bits for transmission. In general, 16 QAM modulation is used under good channel conditions, while QPSK modulation is used under poor channel conditions. Depending upon the UE capability, one or more OVSF codes can be utilized to transmit the packet. Let's discuss how the packet is formed. Recall that one transport block is carried during a 2 millisecond subframe. CRC bits are added to the transport block. Turbo coding with rate 1 over 3 is carried out. Three streams of bits are separated at the output of turbo coding. One stream represents raw information bits called systematic bits, while two other streams contain parity bits. The remaining steps are executed for a new transmission and every retransmission of the packet. The scheduler could choose to prioritize systematic bits or parity bits by selecting bits from the three streams. Either QPSK or 16 QAM is utilized for modulation. When more than one OVSF code is used, the bits are equally divided among the OVSF codes.